I want to review with you the five hidden causes of autoimmune disease. Now, if you've been diagnosed with autoimmune disease, you've likely been told maybe it's because it's in your family or they really don't know. It's just unknown as to why one develops autoimmune disease. And I, I don't believe that's the case. And we practice root cause medicine, which has uh, at its foundation functional medicine. So in, in our field, uh, that is not believed. And hopefully you'll you'll see that side and, and be very encouraged and excited because when you have something that's that's very debilitating, and kind of ruining your life and you're told, well, it's just bad luck. We don't know why you have it. There's not much you can do with that, right? But um, that's untrue. There's a lot you can do. So let's look at what it means, first of all. So auto is self, immune, referring to your, your immune system. And in autoimmune disease, your immune system is attacking self. So if you have celiac disease, it's attacking your small intestine. If you have rheumatoid arthritis, it's attacking your joints. If you have Hashimoto's thyroiditis, it's attacking your thyroid. So the whole point is that depending upon the disease, and there's over a hundred different autoimmune diseases, women, by the way, are afflicted three times more than men. So there, there's, there seems to be a potential hormone link uh, or genetic from the XX versus XY chromosome link. But that aside, the meaning is that your immune system is out of control and has just suddenly decided to attack self for no, no good reason. And that, that really doesn't make sense, right? So let's look at what <laughs> makes a lot more sense. First of all, we have to appreciate that the human immune system is very complex. It's incredibly complex and amazing and brilliant. So. If you were giving your immune system uh, an IQ test, it would score at the very top. It, it's incredible that way. However, let's imagine that somebody with a very high, high IQ was kept up for three days and they weren't allowed to eat and they weren't allowed, you know, they weren't allowed to sleep and, and you just put a lot of stress on them. And then you gave them another IQ test. I think we'd all agree that they would score lower. So that in a way is what's happening with somebody's immune system who has autoimmune disease. So the immune system is brilliant. It knows what its job is to defend you against foreign invaders, toxins, things are, that are gonna do you damage. Your immune system is designed to attack bad guys. It's definitely not designed to attack self. However, when your immune system is attacking things like maybe foods you're having a poor reaction to, or infectious organisms, it's attacking the protein portion of that item. Be it a food like gluten has a, a certain protein that's very inflammatory, uh, organisms like bacteria or even mold or parasites, you know, they have proteins in them. Uh, we're loaded with thousands and thousands of proteins, but it is that protein portion that the immune system is identifying and attacking. Now, Here's how the low IQ thing comes into play. Imagine that every night, because mostly your immune system comes out at night when you're at rest to sort of clean house and, and do its work. That's why when you're not feeling well, you know, you feel like you have the flu or a bad cold, the only thing you wanna do is sleep. It's, it's your immune system's way of saying, you're a mess, just go to sleep, let us do our job and uh, repair you. But we can't do it while you're awake, so get some extra rest. Um, so here it is, it's nighttime, and your immune system is saying, oh, you know, you keep eating the same darn food, and every single night we have to try to deal with this because we really see it as a toxin and it's burdening us. Then you start compounding that with um, some sort of chronic infection. So there's a bacteria or a parasite or, a me or an amoeba or yeast, something that's also in your gut, in your system, that your immune system every day, day after day, is trying to get the better of this. And it can't, it, it, that's the key point, it can't, but it does the battle every single night. So as time passes, the immune system gets overwhelmed and it also gets tired, this is my explanation. So it gets tired and in that state of fatigue, one fine day, because it's so fatigued and a little less intelligent, it confuses a part of your body 
for the bad guy that it's identified and has been legitimately trying to attack. And again, it all has to do with the protein portion. So let's say it's Hashimoto's, which is the most common autoimmune disease. There's a protein in that person's thyroid that looks very similar to this bad guy that the immune system has been trying to handle. And because they're similar proteins, they're obviously not the same, but they're similar enough that the immune system goes, oh, there's a bad guy too. Now it starts the attack on self. So that's how we understand this to initiate, is that it initially started with your immune system doing the right thing, it was going after that bad guy, but it got so worn down that then it made a mistake and then it keeps going in that direction. So when you're trying to unravel this, you have to go back to what started it. And so when we're looking at the five hidden causes of autoimmune disease, the first one is leaky gut, which really encompasses everything else in a way. So I'll go over that. So what is leaky gut? From, from your mouth to your butt is, is one kind of enclosed uh, system. And so we actually think of your digestive tract as being outside the body. Even though it's not hanging on the outside, it's outside because things have to get permission to go into the body. And that's where leaky gut or a healthy gut comes in. So the lining of your intestines, it's only one cell thick, so it's very, very small as far as that's concerned, but there's an intelligence there 70% of your immune system is housed in your gut. So there's an intelligence there that says, oh, you're a bad guy, uh-uh, you're not getting in, meaning into your bloodstream. And then, oh, you're a good guy, you're nicely digested broccoli, <laughs> and you come and, and nourish my cells, you see? So when that immune system, that gut is really healthy, you, you can deal with infectious organisms that come your way because the immune system is robust, kills them where they lie, and, and that's the end of it, and that's what it should be like. But over time, you know, if you have a gluten sensitivity and you've been exposed to not the healthiest food, you're, you're wearing down that resilience of that lining and, and the efficacy of the immune system in the gut. And now you have this leakiness or this permeability aspect happening. And too many things are flowing into the bloodstream that shouldn't. And every time that happens, the immune system again is like, what's that? What's that? What's that? None of that should be in here, you see? And that's weakening it. So, so the leaky gut, is something that's putting a lot of strain on your immune system, making it tired, right, less intelligent, and leading to autoimmune disease. Now, what's weakening the gut? I mentioned gluten, because it's one of the most common food sensitivities that's actually known to create a leaky gut, and it puts a tremendous strain on your immune system if you're sensitive to it. Now, there's a lot of talk about wheat in this country and GMO and et cetera, et cetera. Gluten is found in wheat, rye, barley, and it is a, it's, it's an inflammatory protein for those who can't tolerate it. And that's a, a decent amount of the population. So finding out whether you're gluten sensitive or not is, is key, and we can, we can help you with that. Next, I mentioned bad organisms, so infections like parasites and bacteria. These are things that we get exposed to daily, but if our immune system is functioning the way it should, then once again, it's handling it at the, at the moment. But as we eat less healthfully in our gut microbiome, which is anywhere from 60 to 100 trillion organisms in our large intestine, what happens is that we get a less healthy microbiome and a more inflammatory profile of these organisms. And again, it's putting a lot of stress on our immune system. So there's a lot of things factoring in to this problem that we need to dissect out and handle. And yes, it is true that if you have a leaky gut, you probably have an abundance of bad bacteria in your gut and you likely have a food sensitivity of some sort. I mentioned gluten, but there are, there are others, so we, we figure that out. 
And then the last one, oh, I didn't mention toxins, so that's the fourth one. Uh, toxins like mold exposure, heavy metal exposure. So there's various toxins we can get exposed to, uh, just including also things in our water. Microplastics is something that's been, you know, discussed more recently. We're exposed to a lot of these microplastics. Once again, our immune system doesn't know what to do with those. So we were you know cleaning up our diet cleaning up our environment as much as we can while strengthening that immune system so it's not so overburdened and then lastly is stress so we know that stress weakens our microbiome and weakens our immune system I mean, you see it all the time you maybe have a friend it's like oh i got sick i was under so much stress and then i got sick and and that's that's a real biochemical reaction or a physiologic reaction that occurs because an abundance of stress does weaken the immune system and it makes us more likely to to contract an infection so chronic stress again is putting a lot of stress on that immune system more likely to develop autoimmune so the exciting thing about autoimmune now it depends on how long you've had it uh, what kind of medications you've been on but what we see is a spectrum when we treat our patients of anything from betterment of symptoms, better symptoms need less drugs, better symptoms, meaning feeling better, needing no medication. Uh, so it's a spectrum that we see. So I'm not guaranteeing we reverse all autoimmune disease because we don't. But if you can halt it and you can feel good, and on top of that need less meds or even no meds, we're really making progress. And the, another really key factor here with autoimmune is that when you have one autoimmune disease, you're three to 10 times more likely to develop another. Well, of course you are, because nobody got to the root cause of why you got the first one, right? And all those factors are still present. So it's really exciting news. Autoimmune disease, unfortunately, is, is really continuing to escalate in our environment, in our society, because of all these factors I've just mentioned. But there is something you can do about it. It's really very exciting. And if your doctor is not discussing this, then find one who does. If you like our approach, you're more than welcome to reach out to us for a consultation. We'd love to help. And when we meet with you, we'll let you know if we think we can help or not, because our programs are very customized to the person in front of us. So I hope that sheds some light on autoimmune disease and we'll talk soon.